everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Maria and this is my YouTube channel where I try to make videos about art and life related things. Today is my first time in a while of not having to go into work, so I am celebrating it by trying to make a time-lapse painting video. Today I am going to try to paint a kookaburra, which is a bird from Australia, and I am going to make a time-lapse video using gouache watercolor paints, so we'll see how that goes. I'm really excited to see the end product, so I hope that you will join me on this painting adventure. I have my tripod set up over there in the background, and I have my GoPro stick on there, and I have a smaller little tripod wrapped around, so hopefully it won't fall over during the middle of my painting, but if it holds up, then I will end up publishing this video to YouTube, so we'll see how that goes. And as a side note, I rarely paint my nails, but my friend made her own nail polish recently, and it looks awesome. So whenever she gets her website up, I will be putting a link to that in the description. And now let's get started on our painting adventure, because because that's probably why you're here. I've already sketched out a kookaburra and now I need to tape my paper to my desk so that I can prevent it from getting wavy as it dries. For this video, I'm using Arteza watercolor gouache. I have a habit of never washing my mixing tray because I hate feeling like I wasted color. So as you can see, there's lots of colors already on my mixing tray. And for this painting, I'm going to try to use as many colors as I can from my mixing tray. First, we're going to start with a sap green color. And I'm already off to a disastrous start. Sometimes gouache dries along the edges of the tube and little bits fall off when you open it. Thankfully, I can gently blow them away, but if this happens to you, be careful when you pick them up so that you don't smudge your paper. I'm going to use the sap green color to work on the background before ever touching the kookaburra. Gouache colors are funny in that they look different when they dry. Darker colors dry lighter, and lighter colors dry darker. This sap green is actually a little bit more vibrant than what I was expecting, but that's okay and I'm sure it will look okay once it's all done. Now that the sap green color is dry, my next color is burnt umber. This time I'm going to avoid opening my gouache tube over my watercolor because I hopefully learned my lesson in avoiding gouache crumbs. I really like this burnt umber color because it's so versatile. I especially love mixing it with both blues and reds for different effects. Most of my kookaburra and my tree branches will probably have some amount of burnt umber mixed in with the other colors. I'm going to start out with the tree branches, and because I haven't really decided which ones are closer to the kookaburra and which ones are further, this is going to get interesting. And I'm going to go rogue from my initial sketch and start adding in additional branches. As you might have noticed, my paintbrush has seen better days and the hairs on this brush no longer want to stay together. But I'm somehow getting used to working around this, and it's still one of my favorite brushes. While these branches are drying, I'm going to start working some burnt umber mixed with a little bit of red color into the kookaburra. I know that usually with watercolors or gouache, I should be going from lighter to darker, but I'm impatient and I want to see my kookaburra start to take form, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of this darker color. Because I'll be using the burnt umber color in both the kookaburra's feathers and the tree trunks, and I don't want my bird blending in with the branches, so I'm going to make the branches a cooler color by mixing in some blue, and the feathers a warmer color by mixing in some red. I still haven't figured out a plan for my tree branches, so I'm going to keep working on making my kookaburra take form by adding a nice sky blue color that was already on my mixing tray. This is a pretty vibrant color, so I'm making sure to dilute it so that I can continue to build on that color with other shades. I'm going to continue being a watercolor rule breaker, and I'm going to add in some more dark colors to make the feathers more apparent. I'm very grateful that gouache is supposedly more forgiving than watercolor, so if I regret my decision, I can apply less diluted gouache to cover a problematic area. I'm using a thin 2 over 0 round paintbrush to add in the finer details and to hopefully add in more features to the kookaburra so that it can start to look like a kookaburra. For the small details, I'm using a burnt umber color with a hint of what may have been black gouache for my mixing tray. I already made a mistake by accidentally coloring over the area where the kookaburra's foot should be, so I need to wet the area and try to take off a little bit of the brown color so that I can go back with a lighter yellow color later. It's not coming off perfectly, but that's okay, and I'm not very worried because I can just use a more concentrated yellow color for the feet so that I can cover the brown color. 
While I work on this, I wanted to share some fun facts about the kookaburra. This particular kookaburra that I am painting is known as a laughing kookaburra, and it is the most well-known kookaburra. Kookaburras are the biggest members of the kingfisher family, and they have a very loud song that usually is described as a laugh. The kookaburra in the painting is a male, and you can tell by the blue dots on his wings. Although they are a part of the kingfisher family, kookaburras rarely eat fish, and instead they eat worms, rodents, and reptiles, including snakes. Kookaburras thrive in the woodlands and eucalyptus forests of Eastern Australia and New Guinea. Hi everyone, it's me again from 5 Days in the Future, and I just wanted to let you know that the kookaburra has now become a sticker. Check it out. So if you want your very own kookaburra sticker, be sure to visit the link in the description and you can find it on my Etsy shop. But in the meantime, if you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, as it truly helps tremendously with the algorithm and it means a lot to me as well. For the darkest colors on the kookaburra, I'm going to be mixing Prussian blue and black, also called noir, to make a nice deep blue hue. I like mixing black with blue because I find that it gives it more dimension and keeps it from looking too flat. I'm really liking this deep rich color. Whenever I make animal paintings, my favorite part is when I get to paint the eyes. I feel like it really gives a little bit of life to each of my paintings. At this point, I'm pretty confident that my kookaburra painting is going to turn out looking like a kookaburra. I can continue to use this mixed color, but I'm going to dilute the gouache a little bit so that I can get a more transparent and lighter shade of this color. And now I'm back to working on the branches. I still have no idea what I'm doing with them, but I hope that by keeping them light and with minimal detail, it makes it look like they're far away relative to the kookaburra. I want the leaves to look like they're far away, so I'm using broad strokes and keeping the green color relatively transparent. Because I'm still not sure what I'm doing with the background, I'm going to go back to focusing on the kookaburra and hope for the best on the background. And maybe I'll figure it out along the way. I don't recommend that you do as I do. I highly recommend that you always have a plan when you start working on a painting. Either way, it would probably come out okay, but I usually find that I'm happier with the results when I go into painting with a well thought out plan, instead of just figuring it out as I go. And that's generally good life advice as well. I'm continuing to build up the kookaburra's feathers by trying to use as many colors as I can for my mixing tray. I really love how many colors can be found in a feather. I'm going to use the emerald green color to add blue spots on the feathers. I'm using this color because it's bluish green and it's pearlescent and sparkly which sounds very fitting for how the feathers look when the light hits them at the right angle. Next I'll be using the color Wineberry to build up some of the brown colors in the kookaburra's feathers. I think it will look really nice alongside the burnt umber color. Now that I feel like I've established a good foundation for my colors, I'm going to go back in and add some darker colors and shadows. One of the distinguishing features of the Laughing Kookaburra is its rusty orange tail feathers. Now this painting feels like it's almost complete. Although I've been avoiding it, it's finally time to get back to work on the background and the tree branches. I still need to add more contrast to my Kookaburra by adding some darker and lighter colors. And while doing that, I also want to make the colors a little bit brighter so that they pop out a little bit more. By using a white jelly roll pen, I can add some light back into the picture and add some of the lighter color details. To make the kookaburra's tail feathers pop more, and to transform my painting into a proper kookaburra, I'm using the color orange to make his tail feathers rustier and more elegant. Finally, I'm adding some thicker white gouache to add more texture and contrast to some of the feathers on the kookaburra's chest and wings. I still feel like my darker colors could be a little bit darker, so I'm going to carefully mix in some more of the black gouache with what's left over of the Prussian blue mix and a hint of burnt umber to make it a darker and also warmer color. And now it's finally done and I can finally remove the tape. When removing painter's tape from your watercolor, make sure to slowly and carefully pull the tape away from your painting so that you don't rip the paper. For anyone who's curious, here's how my mixing tray looked once I finished painting. And here's the finished product. 